Hey, it's Greg from Outdoor Goyo, your friendly guide to enjoying activities in nature. In efforts to hype this spirit and energy that surrounds the Olympics, we're hosting a series interviewing athletes from various disciplines that will be competing in Tokyo 2021. Our guest today is a professional rock climber, a decorated boulder sport and speed champion, and one of the most exciting prospects in competitive climbing today. Please help me welcome a Shoreview, Minnesota native and fellow Gemini, Kyra Condi. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was good timing. I think one of my cats just ran into the thing. We even gave a cat warning before this <laughs> even started. <laughs> no, whoops. They're, they're all about attention anyways. <laughs> true, so. yeah. so, all right, let's dive right in and get to know you a little bit, bit better. We know you have cats. Yeah. Um, but do you have any nicknames? Uh, nicknames? Not really. Growing up, my um, old coach used to call me Secret Weapon, but <laughs> that's really the only one I've ever had. Cairo is a short enough name that uh, never, never needed shortening. So. Yeah. And I guess you got Secret Weapon because he held you to the end and you back clean up and you just stole the show. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So um, it's it's also been a tough year in a lot of crazy ways, but what's been exciting you lately? Uh, yeah, let's see. I have been really stoked on training recently. Um, it kind of at the beginning of quarantine, um, I was really excited to just train to train with no like upcoming events just to like without that looming like prospect of having to perform. It was just kind of like liberating to just be able to train. Uh, and then of course that had its own uh, double-edged sword of, well, there's no events to train for. <laughs> Um, so kind of gotten to both sides of that. So I went into a little bit of a lull and now I'm like back to being really psyched again, um, which just feels great. I feel like I'm kind of the strongest I've ever been, which is awesome. Um, I've also been watching a lot of movies, uh, doing some crafts, playing with my cats, kind of <laughs> typical quarantine life, you know, so. Yeah. Um, another thing, do you collect anything? Are you a collector? Um, I always used to collect like knickknacks whenever I would go, um, traveling like any type of like little things <laughs> like um so I have like my whole dresser at home is just covered in knickknacks um but otherwise not like a specific thing that I collect what's your go-to song in karaoke um that's a hard question I think my go-to would be uh come on by Kesha <laughs> nice <laughs> cool we're actually going to compile a whole playlist of all these interviews and uh We'll definitely have to put that one on there. <laughs> uh, so now that we know you a little bit better on a personal level, I want to talk about your passion for climbing. Now, first of all, congratulations on qualifying for the Olympics. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that was very exciting. It feels like forever ago now. It was last November. Which was like I know. A year ago, but... <laughs> yeah, uh, this year has felt really fast and really short at the same time. Totally. Uh, so this is the first year that sport climbing is going to be in the Olympics. So we're excited to cheer you on. But for those who haven't watched competitive climbing, what, what do viewers need to know? Like, what are we looking for? Yeah, so the way that climbing is going to be at the Olympics is not the way that most competitions go. Um, so there's three disciplines in competition climbing. There's bouldering, lead climbing, and speed climbing. Uh, and typically at like a World Cup, they're all separate. So you'd have a bouldering competition, a lead competition, and a speed competition. Uh, but since we were only given one set of medals for this Olympics, it's since it's our debut, uh, we decided to do a combined format that still shows off all three disciplines. So even though most people aren't like a specialist in all three, um, this way we get to display all three disciplines of our sport at the Olympics. All right, I just wanted to pause this, take a time out for one second to talk about the different types of climbing that are going to be in the Olympics this year, because that came through really fast. And for those who do not know, it is worth explaining. Now, the first type that Kyra mentioned was bouldering. Bouldering is a very short climb. You can see from this footage that it's only a few moves and you get to the top, there's no ropes. The second type is lead climbing. This is also called sport climbing. You do have a rope, but you are responsible for clipping that rope into the carabiners that are bolted along the route. Then there's speed climbing. So the fixed rope is at the top and you race as fast as you possibly can to get to the top of this climb. And it's truly amazing how fast people can go up this thing. So hope that helped. Back to the footage. Uh, 
Um, and so but the way it works basically is that you do a bouldering round, you do a lead round and you do a speed round all in one day. And the person who wins is the person with the lowest overall rank. So they take your rank in each and they multiply them together. So if you have a first place, a uh, 10th place and a 10th place, you would have a hundred points. Wow. So you do that all in one day. Yeah. <laughs> big day. <laughs> have you been training like that? Um, not quite that like that yet before the events that are like that definitely um, do some combined days uh, where you do all three and like get really tired and like practice that aspect of it. Um, but no, right now it's just a lot of um, general training. So how do you think the USA will do in the Olympics? You know, I think we already surprised everybody by we basically two athletes, uh, two male athletes and two female athletes per country was the quota. And um, only three countries have filled their quota for climbing uh, and the US is one of them. And so I don't think anybody would have guessed that including us. So, I mean, I think we're already exceeding expectations and with so much time to train, like I feel really good about how we'll do. That's awesome. So what are, what's the top three? Uh, top three at the Olympics? The, the expected top three, I guess I could say. Um, well, if you're going off of like the last year's results, like when competitions were happening, um, I mean, it's really hard. There's so many people who are so good. But like the women, uh, Japan is like full of powerhouses, um, like Miho, Nanaka, and Akio Noguchi are both amazing, um, as well as Yanya uh, from Slovenia. She's um, just absolutely dominated the last few World Cup seasons. Um, and for the men, like Tomoa Narasaki, also from Japan, um, Jakob Hubert from Austria. There's a whole bunch of them. I mean, honestly, it's like totally a toss-up. So... Um what event are you most psyched about? You said there's three in one day. Which one are you psyched about? And then which one is probably your weakness? Um, I am a bouldering specialist. So that's the one that I like the best. Um, but personally, um, I think I'm probably worst at lead, even though that's not necessarily, I would say I'm like a pretty good all arounder. Like I don't have a huge weakness, um, but I actually have a slight advantage in speed. Not that I think I'm like not much better at it, but I've just competed at it for a longer time because in the U S like we tended to do, um, all three disciplines growing up in youth. Whereas in other countries, uh, people specialized earlier than that. So I actually did speed climbing as a youth competitor. That's awesome. So rock climbing is considered a solo sport since no one's like actually helping you grip onto these holds. However, there's so much camaraderie in the sport, most importantly, having to trust like the other person holding the rope for example, but how would you describe the climbing community? Um, I think, yeah, there is a lot of camaraderie in the climbing community. Um, it's, it is interesting because you can go into the gym and have a completely solo session. You could even like just train in your garage or like at home and never see anybody and just climb alone. Uh, but it would really defeat the purpose, I feel like in a lot of ways, um, especially if you're wanting to do lead climbing. Yeah, you need to have somebody who belays you. Um, in bouldering, it's helpful to have other people out there both to like, um, like even outside, not just competitions, like to have like different ideas about how you're going to do a climb, uh, spotters, things like that. Um, so like a lot of times like you do actually have like somebody's safety kind of like in your hands. So I feel like that adds a lot of aspect to like just the, the way you connect with people in the sport. For anyone who has tried or watched um, even rock climbing, it's, it's such an art. Like you think that you're just going to, like the first time you do it, you think you're just going to be able to climb up this thing. And then you realize really quickly that it's a lot more difficult than that. It's, I kind of, it's like being a dancer and maybe like a little ninja action. Um, how would you describe your own personal climbing style? Um, I think my climbing style is really like uh, determined, I guess is a good word for it. Like, I don't think I'm the most graceful. Like, I don't think I, um, but I think I am like, I, like really strong. And that's like where, where my like strength lies, I guess, within climbing. Um, so I can like brute force my way through things a lot of times uh, where somebody else might kind of more finesse it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think that comes from like a determination. Like I, um, like, I feel like I've worked really hard to get to where I am, so. In that art aspect, do you, is it something like a writer's voice? Is that something you have to develop over time? You're like, this is my style and this is how I do that. And you have to find that. Um, I think it does come with time. I think my style has come from like how I grew up climbing. I grew up on this wall that was full of a bunch of adult guys. And I was like this 13 year old girl trying to keep up. So I, I kind of had to brute force my way through things to just even try to keep up. 
uh, and the wall was super overhanging. So I like got really used to this like style of just like straight, straight down climbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when it's overhanging, I guess you have to make aggressive moves just to get where you need to go. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but in climbing, it, it's, it's like a sequence of holds is called a problem, right? And the climber's job is to solve the problem by reaching the top. Are you a good problem solver in other aspects of your life? Uh, I like to think I actually am. Uh, I think it's probably one of my strengths in general. I really like puzzles. So like, um, like jigsaw puzzles, just putting things in the right place, I guess, in general. Um, I also have always loved those uh, like escape rooms that are like kind of problem solving. <laughs> <laughs> like I think that's just kind of how my brain works so I really enjoy that type of problem solving and that probably does uh, correlate to climbing that's really cool uh what challenges did you come across in getting to where you are today uh the main challenge I've had is that when I was 12 years old I had um scoliosis and needed to get a uh, spinal fusion surgery so um I got 10 vertebrae T2 through T12 uh, fused together. So they're basically one bone now. And that means that that entire section of my back can't really bend or twist at all. Cause it's almost as if you have like an ulna <laughs> in that section of your back instead of like a bunch of different vertebrae. Um, so like it doesn't actually end up affecting my climbing too often. Um, as the moves get weirder uh, and more intense as they have been in competition and as I've gotten stronger, um, I notice it a lot more, which is a bit of a bummer, <laughs> but What's your uh what's your diet like you said you're a vegetarian but is it like yeah. is that hard to pack in as much nutrients as you need um well I started I, I was a vegetarian since I was eight years old um and so I think my body got really used to it like I was a vegetarian before I was an athlete um so I think that actually is like really helpful because I do know some athletes who have tried to switch to a vegetarian diet uh and just like tanked uh, energy wise um but I am not vegan so like I get a lot of protein um from like other sources but yeah. But yeah. I I've, a lot in general. So. Have you ever had to work with like a nutritionist or anything, or is this that like you said you've done this since for a long time? So you kind of know how to navigate it. Uh, yeah, no, I've never really worked with a nutritionist. One of my sponsors, um, has like a nutritionist who's one of their, um, uh, like the people who works there. Um, so I've like talked to her a bit, but not necessarily specifically about like my diet. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I, I kind of wanted to get into like the psyche a little bit. Um, what kind of emotions do you feel when you compete? Oh man, you, I, like climbing competitions are really interesting because it's not like a race a lot of times or uh, like a gymnastics routine that's planned beforehand. Um, you're always doing something different and it also is completely out of your control basically what you are doing or what you're going to get at least. So that aspect of it is completely unique to climbing and therefore quite stressful. <laughs> um, so I think it can be super frustrating sometimes if you've like prepared fully for this competition, the best you ever have, you can be the strongest you've ever had. And then there could be a climb that is just so completely not your style that you just get like kind of screwed over, um, which both adds to the emotion of climbing and also like the frustration of competing. Um, but it's also really cool because like, that's what makes climbing so interesting is that you have this whole other mental aspect um that like no other sport has and how does like when you're competing with like crowds and the olympics like how does that all play into your psyche are you are you are you scared um i actually don't really notice the crowd usually uh i tend to like tune them out a bit uh but it is really exciting i think to climb in front of that many people especially if you're doing well <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like an extra boost but who knows what the uh turnout will be um there, but we'll definitely be cheering you on through the television. So you should okay. know that we're there. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully <laughs> a lot of spectators there, but never know. Um, what are you afraid of? Not just in climbing, but just like in general. Like what, what are uh, your fears? I'm not a huge fan of bugs. I, I like them in concept, <laughs> but I don't want them on me or near me. Um, <laughs> That's why you have cats, hopefully. This is why I have cats. Well, I actually also can't kill them because I feel too bad. So it's really a conundrum. Um, <laughs> Let's see, I, oh, I also am like actually quite afraid of weather, like thunderstorms and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I have been ever since I was a little kid. That's probably <laughs> the only thing that like makes me jump. <laughs> yeah. Does, uh, does Salt Lake have a lot of thunderstorms? No, it's not too bad. Not as bad as That's the Midwest. Good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> um, so I've heard that you, you want to go to veterinarian school, speaking of cats and bugs. <laughs> Is that true? 
Yeah, it's still my plan. Basically, the only two things that I've ever really imagined uh, being able to do for the rest of my life would be climbing in some variety or being a vet. Um, what really interests me, interests me about being a vet is that you get to do everything. You get to be like the dentist and also the general practitioner and also the um, like surgeon. You get to do all aspects of it, uh, which I think is really cool. Um, and like, you don't get to do that as like a human doctor. And also it's a lot more school. <laughs> um, and so for what I like want to do with my life, it makes the most sense. And also I think it would be really interesting. Did you want to do that from when you were a little kid? Yeah, since I was like in second grade or something. <laughs> That's cool. Is there like a planned uh, progression of how this is all going to work out? Are you going to ride climbing or have you kind of got school as a date or a year yet? Or how's that working out? Yeah, so I haven't applied to vet school yet, but I have finished my undergrad. Um, I finished my, I graduated in 2018. Um, so like my, my general plan was like try and qualify for the Olympics, do the Olympics, then I like have a couple years or a year to do the World Cup circuit and focus on like some World Cup goals um but since 2020 got essentially canceled uh that kind of put all my plans back a little bit and also like being a pro climber is like working out well and I'm really happy with like what I've been able to do within the community and um within USA climbing as well um so like I definitely want to keep doing that as much as possible so I'm like I'm in no rush for vet school I guess is the thing <laughs> but it's definitely still my plan is there a greater humanitarian reason of like of being a vet not really. It's mostly just what I want to do. I like the idea of like helping individual people like that. It seems like there might be a connection somehow between you being a vegetarian and then like helping animals at the same time, right? I love that. Yeah, too. I don't think I'd be a large animal vet. Probably. probably vet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your favorite animal? Um, I love orangutans. I think they're so cool. They're like cool. the mischievousness of like a teenager in the body of like a man with like the abilities of like a two-year-old, which I think is just like hilarious. If you haven't already seen it, you should watch David Attenborough's new uh, show on Netflix. Oh, okay. If you, if you have Netflix, you should watch it. Um, he does a lot of stuff, right, about like the planet and mm -hmm. the world, but there's a new one about his life and he talks about... Um, his travels and all the research he's done. He's 93 years old now. Wow. Um, he talks about where the planet has come in those 93 years that he's seen since he's traveled all around the world and documented it. And then what the future could look like if we keep going. And then what will happen if we make some changes and he oh, wow. lays them out. So highly recommend you watch that and, and tell all your friends about it because I think it's a, a really good video. All right, sweet. I'll look at it. Yeah. Movie night tonight with your rights. <laughs> Could be. We've, we've been like running out of things to watch. So there you go. Or that and um, We Are the Champions is really fun. Oh, I've heard that's quite good. Yeah. Yeah. It's hilarious. Um, it'll, it'll have the competitive edge that you love and <laughs> just pure stupidity. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, many people are joining the outdoor recreation world since the pandemic started and people are seeing nature as an escape and they're getting outside. What advice do you have for people who may be interested in climbing? Um, I think the biggest thing is that like really, really anybody can climb. Um, I, I think a lot of people think that it's not for them. I think they see movies like Free Solo or um, uh, like Don Wall and like that's their only intro into climbing. And it's like, oh, well, I don't want to do that. It's like, well, I don't want to do that either. <laughs> like, um, you know, there's like so many aspects of climbing. You can do really whatever you want with it. Like you can just go to the gym once a month and like climb just fun climbs. You could also like totally fall in love with it and do it seven times a week, basically like what I do. Um, like, you know, so there's so many different ways that you can, you can climb and it's just like a really amazing community. And I think I, everybody should try to do it. I think one thing that's really cool about it as well is that it people don't and people don't see this because they see those amazing videos of people doing very daring things and dangerous things is that it's a family atmosphere like when you go to the gym there are actually a ton of kids there and there's adults climbing there's kids climbing like you started when you were how old like 10 was it like 11 yeah yeah it's it's a it's a really fun place like kids are little orangutans anyways um climbing everything so um, anybody out there who is interested in climbing or a different type of workout and a cool community, climbing is definitely a place to be. Totally. Um, and not just climbing on a wall, but like most climbing gyms have 
like a gym or they'll have treadmills, they'll have workout equipment there. They'll have different classes. Some gyms have yoga included as well. Yoga and climbing sometimes go hand in hand with that. So yeah. if you are interested in it, be sure to look up your local gym when they open up again. Um, that's kind of a wrap. I want to know how can people follow you and support you on your journey? Where, where, should, we, where should we seek you? Uh, yeah, um, I mostly post on Instagram. That's kind of my main social media. Uh, and it's just my name, Kyra underscore Condi. Um, yeah, I try to answer people's questions as much as possible too. So if anybody sends me uh, a DM, I try to reply. So Cool. Well, thanks so much. <laughs> You've been a, a pleasure to have, and I wish you the best of luck. We're so excited to cheer you on in 2021, and um, hopefully you can be standing on that podium. Sweet. Thanks. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Have fun with your kitty cats and enjoy your dinner. Thanks. Yeah. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye.